Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. U.P. Singh, Mr. Anil Rajan, and the present audience. Welcome to today's deliberations on the World Water Day. Well, all of you must have heard, and there was a film being uh, played on the screen which gave a reasonably good and comprehensive view of where we stand on water, the different problems, the different statistics. I find that to begin on water, we look at the simple drop of surface water, sprinkling, and the energy that is there in this drop, which when drop combines with drop with another drop, gives us a flow which sustains humanity, vegetation, and entire source of life. At a macro level, I find there are four issues which need deliberations. One is the quantity of water or the scarcity of water is on the increase. That is, the population is growing, the urbanization is increasing, the lifestyle is changing, the eating habits are changing, the sanitation habits are changing, and so on and so forth, giving rise to increase in the use of water per capita, per day, per annum. With this, we come to the second, the quality of water. That is, pollution of water is on the increase globally, not in a particular city, in country, or an area. Globally, the pollution of water is on the increase. Third factor is the groundwater. The depth of groundwater is increasing, and with the increase in depth, the quality is deteriorating. These three factors, clubbed with the four factors, which was already in existence but now more evident, is the nexus between water, energy, and food security. All the three are interdependent on each other. If you don't have water, you don't have life, either in humans, or in vegetation, or in animal, or in the aquatic life. Because water and oxygen are important ingredients for the sustenance of life. With this, if we need water, somebody says, if the surface water is not adequate, we can have groundwater. Now to have the groundwater, we need laxity to pull it up, then to store it, then to pump it to the distribution center, and then, then again back from the distribution center to the centers of its use where it is required and the purpose for which it is required. Then there was uh, another uh, question from a very innocent child. Can there be a situation when there is no water? The answer is no, because the geographic mass of the Earth is fixed more or less in the short and medium term, and the geographic, the distribution of water is also fixed because it is total. It can vary from place to place, from pocket to pocket, country to country, area to area, depending on its topography, its proximity to the meridian, its proximity to the sea, and the climatic zone where it is located. Now, all these factors, they temporarily affect the availability or availability of water, number one. The quality of water, number two. Number three, the use for which it is meant, whether it is for drinking, whether it is for irrigation, whether it is for horticulture, whether it is for fisciculture, and so on. Somebody said ki, with the increase in technology, we can convert saline water, which is about 70% of the total, or rather more than that, 
I think I have gone wrong on that. It's, uh, so salinity, saline water can be desalinated. Earlier, the power is ex expensive. In the oil producing countries, the gas is cheap, so they were doing the desalination work. And I think one of the companies that is being awarded today is the one which has very efficiently used the desalination process. But again, the desalination process uh, poses a question. A, whether the technology is efficient. B, whether it is cost efficient. C, whether it is financially viable. D, how far it is from the place of use, how to transport that water to the place of use and point of use. So these are certain macro level questions where we may have solutions, but the solutions have their own cost limitations with the improvement in technology in solar power. 10 years back, it was about 14 rupees a unit. Today, it is two and a half rupees a unit. Five years down the line, it is expected it will be less than a rupee per unit. At that stage, desalination may become a feasible and financially viable solution. But again, the facilities for storage, for transportation to the civic centers, and from the civic centers, again pumping in back to the consumers. We'll have both capital expenditure, revenue expenditure, manpower expenditure, and the availability of trained manpower. So it is not only the water, it is also the related relevant infrastructure to deliver the water to the people who require it and for the purpose for which they need it and the quality which they require. These are the major questions. Today when we look at, we find Canada has a lot of water, but it is in different pockets. There are scarcities and there are abundance. In California, I was shocked to read that the Californian Water Commission had ordered 20% reduction in water use. And the fine for not Achieving that is something we can't imagine. It is 500 Canadian dollars per day. I, I was also surprised. So I reread the whole thing and I found yes, it was 500 Canadian dollars per day. Similarly, we have the case in India. We have the monsoons. A part goes dry. There's a drought-like situation the electricity is pulled up, the groundwater is lifted, the crops are sown. Once the crops have reached the level, there is a torrential rain and there is a flood. And this flood levels the crops. At the end of the season, as per the statistics, the country has sufficient and plentiful rainfall, but it has led to a drought-like situation. That is water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. With these remarks, gentlemen, I welcome you to the deliberations of this. Thank you.